I'm Deborah from Kiss My Wonder Woman, and we're being fil filmed by Heart Gaming. And this is Jane Espenson. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do have some, you know, hard hardcore nerd questions. Sure. I'm a very big fan of your work, and I appreciate that you've written on like half of the shows that I love. Thanks. So, <laughs> um, but actually, I really wanted to get into um, your linguistics work. Oh, good. Love it. I, I know that's probably not... Nobody talks about that. It's good. I think it was, I uh, I think it was valid work. Yeah, no, I actually wanted to talk about um, if that has impacted the way in which you view language mm -hmm. when you write. Mm -hmm. I think it's more a case of, you know, does coffee cause heart attacks? Well, no, they're both, you know... No, oh, that's a bad example. And causation versus correlation? Causation versus correlation, exactly. I feel that my interest in metaphor grew out of a natural propensity to use metaphor, which is, is what yeah. also leads to um, <laughs> to my using a lot of metaphor when I write. So I, I think some of the lines that I've written that are most successful come from saying like, how is, how could I describe this scene metaphorically? What is this like? How, how would you boil it down for someone who's trying to understand this complex situation? How would you boil it down to a physicalized situation? That where you're, you're going down to the bare physical things of pushing things around and moving them, and then have a character say that, and it just crystallizes it. Yeah. Uh, and I lovely if I can think of an example, but um, oh, here's an example. Okay. Um, trying to explain the fact that when Buffy did a spell and doing the spell, it caused inadvertently caused a demon to arise, mm -hmm. uh, and somebody said like that's the cost of doing the spell, and Anya goes. Well, actually, she got something extra by doing this spell, so it's not a cost, it's a gift with purchase. And it was like, oh, yeah. Just saying that makes, like, for me, just sort of crystallizes what happened. <laughs> like, she got something she didn't expect. That's a gift with purchase. Oh, yeah, I didn't, oh, no. Like, it's And a it demon. works perfectly into the characterization for Anya. Exactly. Cause... That's how, that's the metaphor that Anya would use because she is a very, um, a, a transactional type. Person. That is a really nice way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love I love figuring out how would this character look at things, what metaphor would they use, and then put that in their mouth. And I think that I don't think that comes necessarily from my having studied metaphor, but it's the same impulse that made me want to study metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, the work is really valid. The fact that we don't seem to be able to understand complex notions directly, that we have yeah. to understand them metaphorically, really gets to okay. So if you want to communicate something to someone. Don't, don't look for the really precise technical words. Look for the, mo the shortest, most physical, most easily grasped concept and figure out how to explain it in terms of that. And I think that's, I try to do that in my yeah. writing. And, I, and actually when people are very emo emotional, they get less precise, they get less good at forming sentences, particularly poetic sentences. And they, they use very short sentences with very short basic level words. Um, I think that's the thing a lot of people miss when they have someone make this big emotional love speech. They tend to have them get very poetic. Or in fact, you should have them get the least poetic. Like, if you're practically a grunting caveman. Like, <laughs> like it, should be, it should be very stoppy, sturdy, short bursts. Yeah, or um, she's the man. Do you like cheese? Yeah, exactly. I want to go there from um, yeah. <laughs> Tina Fey. Like, Love that. that's, that's what, what you get when you're genuinely expressing desire, not big poetry. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the physicality. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I hadn't actually thought of it in that term. Yeah, um, I, had, I hadn't taken it back, because I knew one of my favorite things was Tina Fey's I want to go to there. Yeah. And it's like, that's why that's so perfect, is because it is making it absolutely, it's about physical motion, uh -huh. very short words, and, and inarticulate, yeah. inart the inarticulateness of passion. And even when there is a concept, it right. still makes perfect sense because, exactly. well, and, and I think that gets down to the um, universalness mm -hmm. uh, of motion in that mm -hmm. in translating work, especially work that involves a lot of metaphor, right. there's the horrificness of yeah. idiom. Yes, uh, which we've confronted on Husbands because our, our show depends so much on wordplay word play that yeah. we don't translate very well. Very witty. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Brad Bell and I both love a pun, a play on words, um, you know, some play with the auditory nature of, of what it, what's being said, and uh, it's very hard to do uh, subtitles. We have a good yeah. subtitlist uh, who, who works with us, but uh, it's still very hard to, con to convey that kind of humor um, because, yeah, in addition to, like, wanting to express things in a very basic way, 
Yes, if you're writing the big emotional speech, absolutely. But if you're just having characters talk and quip and be fun with each other and have fun even in a dramatic situation, word plays a big part of our everyday life. It is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah the other, uh, we were signing autographs in New York and I slid the photograph across to Sean Hemian, who plays the other husband, mm -hmm. and I said, put your Sean Hancock on that. And then I was like, oh my Aww. gosh, I <laughs> Like, I love it when you say something yeah. and then you go like, oh my god, did you hear how that sounded? That was so funny. Yeah. If you feel like there's something to the use of language in creating gendered spaces in writing, mm -hmm. um, you know, the immediate thing that comes to mind is the fact that you can say bitch on television, but you can't say shit. Right. That's interesting. Um, what's interesting about bitch, though, I think for me, is the way it has been so successfully reclaimed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, there, there's a, there's a, that notion of like, if a man did this, we'd call him assertive, and if a woman did that, we'd call him a bitch. We've gotten to the place now where we call either one of them a bitch, and we'd mean assertive. Yeah, like, that's there, true. It's like, the word has, has, has really um, evolved in what I think is a positive way. Um, but say more about, about what you mean about gendered spaces. Okay. I, this sounds like a, an academic <laughs> term that I'm not familiar with, so I need to grasp it. Okay. We're going to get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, well, language <coughs> defines our reality. The mm -hmm. language that we speak defines how we interact with reality. Yes. Um, they've done studies that people from Russia actually are more depressed because of the way that the language interacts with feelings of hope. I don't want to see what Lakeup said about that, but um, but <laughs> but I know what you mean. Uh, I I might I might tweak the wording of that, but yes, I will go with you. Like like for the matters of the discussion, let's yeah. go with that. Yes. I, I have defined my terms. Yes. Um, <laughs> and. Um, as a result of that, I, I'm just wondering if you've ha felt like you need to be more conscious of the terms that mm. you use to refer to gender when you're writing, because knowing that those terms will then determine the way that people think about gender yes. going forward. Yes, absolutely. Um, when again, when we were at New York Comic Con last week, there was a T-shirt that was being sold that said "Strong Female Character," and they said you should you should buy that, and I sort of felt like. I'm, I'm sort of starting to have a reaction against labeling things as sort of like all the, the, pot, the panels and everything that are strong women of, and then I get invited on the panel, and I, go, I, I always feel like to set ourselves apart that way suggests that strong women are weaker than the weakest man, sort of, it's like, yeah, yeah like, like I feel like we may be doing ourselves a bit of a damage, and I saw Joss retweeted something that said like, down with, uh, uh, like, uh, women women in blank, women mm -hmm. in blank conventions, up with women in blank conventions. Oh, like, yeah. Like, like the, the women in sets us apart in a way that could be negative. And that's why I absolutely, yeah. so I didn't buy that t-shirt. Brad Bell did. He was like, <laughs> I want that t-shirt because he's like, I have strong female characteristics. I want to be able to wear a t-shirt that says strong female character and huh. like challenge the yeah. assumption that femininity belongs only to women and that, that, and that it is. And it can be a strength for everyone. Uh, and I thought, like, that redefines the language. It really Re does. Yeah, makes you think. Him wearing that shirt makes you think. Um, and it, it, like, completely deflates the whole bad thing that I was seeing in it. Of going, like, well, I'm a strong character. I'm not just strong for a woman. I'm strong. And him going, like, yeah, but you put it on a man, and it says something totally different. So That's there's, really yeah, cool. there's really interesting things going on there with language. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I think thank we're you. out of time. Yeah. <laughs> but I really appreciate you nerding out with me.